In this section, I'm going to show you how you can record directly into WaveLab and how it has a lot of really cool automated recording facilities that most DAW programs don't have. So there's some really cool ways to capture your audio in WaveLab. But before we can actually capture audio, we need to verify that we have the proper input and output assigned in our audio control panel. So let's go under the options pull down menu and select audio streaming settings. Now if you are on a Windows PC then this is going to be the second option in the list. In fact global preferences will be at the top so make sure you bypass that and go to audio streaming settings. Now I have chosen the Steinberg UR28M as my audio interface, and unless you have the exact same audio interface, this will say something different. So you could be using your built-in audio or a different sound card to capture the audio, but just make sure that you have the preferred audio interface chosen under audio device. And then you can see that there are these four tabbed pages that we talked about in a previous tutorial. And what you'll want to do is go to the recording tab and make sure that channels 1 and 2 in WaveLab are assigned to the physical connections on your audio interface that you want to use. In this particular case, I have a cassette deck plugged into analog inputs 3 and 4. So those are the devices that I have assigned to channels 1 and 2 of WaveLab. If you wanted to use different inputs, you just click on this list and it will allow you to choose your preferred audio input. So now that I have that defined, I can click on OK, and the next thing to do is to open the recording dialog box, and you can do that a number of different ways. One way is to come to the toolbar up at the top here, and if you have a wide enough display, you can find the record button. It's just a little red button over here, but since my monitor resolution is a little low, I have to click this little button to get to the transport control. So I can click the record button here, or I could come down here and click on the record button in the switcher, which doesn't actually engage the recording. All it does is reveal the recording dialog box, or the shortcut is just to click the asterisk key that is on your numeric keypad, not the one that's on the upper row of numbers on your keyboard, which doubles for the number eight, but actually the asterisk on the numeric keypad. And so I'm going to do that because I love shortcuts. And so now we're looking at the recording dialog box. Now, if I back out here just a little bit, you can see that I'm actually not able to see all of the dialog box at this resolution, but just know that uh, I will be getting to the stuff down here at the bottom. So I'll zoom back in, and now we're looking at three tabbed pages across the top of the recording dialog box. Make sure that you're on the method tab, and then we can come over here to file to create, and we have a couple of choices. We can choose to record a temporary file, which means that after the recording is finished, we'll need to make sure that we save it if we actually want to keep it. But but what I like to do is choose the named file option. And with named file, then I can choose the name of the file itself. So I'm going to call this cassette. And then I can choose where that file is going to be recorded to. So I'm going to click on this little folder, select browse folders, and I'm going to go to my desktop. And I've just got a little folder there called recording and I'll click choose. Then I can change my file attributes by clicking on the currently selected attributes, which are listed right here. Wave, PCM, Stereo, 44.1, and in 32-bit floating point. But if you wanted to change any of those parameters, just click that button, and then you can choose what parameters you want to use. Like if you wanted to record in 16-bit, you can do that. But I'm going to leave it set to the 32-bit floating point process. And then under input, you can choose to record directly from the audio input of your hardware or from the output of WaveLab. And I hardly ever use that option. Really, I just record from the audio inputs. And then if you're not quite sure which inputs you have selected, you can choose set input and double check which inputs you have assigned to channels one and two here in the recording channels dialog box. Then you can click OK. And then on the right hand side of the screen, there are some options 
options, but I'm going to get to this in a different tutorial. So let's just move right down here to the preset window where you can save the configuration if you want to just populate all of these parameters with your favorites. But I'm not going to do that right now. Instead, I'm going to come down here and look. It's the same VU meter that we're used to seeing in WaveLab, except that now it exists in our recording dialog. And we have the exact same parameters. We have level on the left and right with average and peak meters. And the same thing with the pan volume. We have pan left and right for both peak and average. Now, if you would rather see the spectrometer, you can come here and choose the spectrometer in this window instead. I hardly ever do that. Normally, I want to be looking at the levels for recording. And if I want to change anything about the VU meter, I can click on settings and that will reveal the exact same settings window as our normal VU meter that we're used to in Wave Lab. But I'm going to close that for right now. There's also a reset button if you want to reset the VU meter and have it start to analyze all over again. And then the monitor button allows us to listen to the recording while it is recording or while we're stopped and listening here, which I'll show you in just a second. And then underneath here, there are some marker options, and it also shows you the record time and the remaining time available on your hard drive and the current hard drive capacity in hours, minutes, and seconds, and memory size, so I've got 94.4 gigabytes available on my scratch disk. And then there are some standard transport controls down here at the bottom, including record and pause and stop. But then there's also a split now button, which will allow you to make new files during the recording just by hitting the split now button. That will save the current file and start a brand new file without any loss of data in between the split. And then you can also discard the recording, kind of like hitting stop, but this will erase the file that you have recorded. And then there's the close button for closing the dialog box. Now, if I were to start playback right now on my cassette deck, then I would be able to set the input level on my audio interface by turning up the uh, gain controls on inputs three and four. So let's make sure that we get a level set. So I'm going to reach over here and hit the play button on my cassette deck. Ooh, there's some tape hiss. And I'm going to turn that down. So I've got the cassette running. This is <laughs> me at about 16 years old. You don't want to hear this. But anyway, I'm recording the output of the cassette deck into the proper inputs. And you can see that the level is coming in and that the peak values are getting close to zero without actually exceeding zero. So I've maximized my signal to noise ratio of the cassette material coming into my analog inputs on my audio interface. So now I'm all set to record. So if I wanted to start the recording, I would just hit the record button. So as soon as I do that, now we're recording. You'll notice that when the recording is engaged, all of the parameters above the VU meter are grayed out. We can't change any of these parameters during the recording. But we also have now active the uh, split now button and the discard button, which were grayed out before. So those two buttons only appear when we're recording. And it also shows us how long we have been recording both in time and in memory size. So if you wanted to stop the recording, let's hit stop. And you'll notice that the window closes automatically and the recording that we've made is right here in our audio file workspace ready to be edited and you'll also notice that the name that we gave it is here in the name tab and there is no asterisk next to it that's because this file is in its pure form its raw recorded form it would be different if we were not saving a named file in other words if we had gone to our recording and chosen the temporary file then what's going to show up in the audio file workspace is an untitled file and we would need to save that if we wanted to keep it. So that is the basics of recording into WaveLab. But now in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you some really cool things that you can do to make this process more automated. Stay tuned.